Don't don't worry about the sword. That's not a comment on anything. That's just the decoration I have on on this table. It's a very nice sword, actually. Uh, but it's it's not. I say it's not related to anything. That's just it's just there. It's very nice. I like it. Anyway, as you may have figured from the title of this video, I'm um, about to do something perhaps unexpected to people who have seen some of my videos. I'm about to give praise to a Tory. That is an unusual thing to do in these times. Um, essentially, it boils down to on Twitter yesterday, I made a sort of bet that my local MP would not come out in both opposition to the actions of Dominic Cummings and call for his resignation. And, well, this video exists, so you can guess what she's done. But I'm going to read her statement out in its entirety. Got it on my, on my phone here. Uh, it's titled My View on Dominic Cummings. Very, very original title there. Uh, I don't know why I'm mocking that. Look at the title of this video. <laughs> it's just a description of the thing I am doing. Well done me. Anyway. The issue of Dominic Cummings' recent trip to County Durham has dominated the news in the last few days. Literally hundreds of constituents have commented, contacted me on this issue. I wanted to reserve judgment until I heard Mr. Cummings' statement. Having now heard it and considered the clearly expressed views of my constituents who have made repeated sacrifices during lockdown, I've decided to make my view known to the Prime Minister that I believe Mr Cummings should resign. Whilst I am sympathetic to the stress of the situation he was in, as a husband and a parent, I do not believe his actions were appropriate. I believe it is vitally important that the government presents clear guidance about the lockdown and that we should all be doing and what we all should be doing to help defeat the virus. We should all follow that guidance, no matter who we are. That is more important than the role of any one government advisor, and I cannot defend the indefensible. And I'm going to take issue with that. those few words. You've frequently defended the indefensible. We'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, for the avoidance of doubt, I do not support press or public harassment of Mr Cummings, his wife, or and child at their home. Um, neither do I support um, harassment of, of any description. Um, though I will just say there is a distinct line between harassment and protest, and protesting in the vicinity of his home is, I would say, fine. Having the press at his home, the place where he lives to get interviews and such and like, I would say is fine, provided they are not, as, a, as stated, directly harassing the fellow. Anyway, I did say that if she would come out of this, I would produce a video of me giving her a round of applause. And I forgot to put my phone on silent, but let's just, uh, let's just do that now. Shh. Quiet time phone. Okay. Anyway, I did say I would give her a round of applause for doing the right thing, so here we go, there we are. Well done, Pauline. You did a good. A. Good. This does not make up in any way, shape, or form for your uh, support of Brexit, for, as an example. Uh, that was a campaign based exclusively on lies, on the avocation of anti-intellectualism, on weaponizing bigotry and racism. Uh, it was a tremendous act of self-harm, will continue to be a massive act of self-harm against the national interest. Um, in fact, it would be not unreasonable to declare it, perhaps, the singular greatest betrayal of natural interest, natural, national interest in living memory at the very least. It, it, absolutely disgusting Brexit in its entirety. Uh, it does not make up for your um, vocal opposition to the findings of the Supreme Court case in which your boss, our Prime Minister, God help us all, Boris Johnson was found guilty of lying to the Queen to attempt to bypass our democratic system for his own political agenda. It does not make up for your multiple votes uh, in fact, I've got a little list here. The list. So yeah, so let's put it this way. That one statement is the one good thing she's done, and this is just an example of the things that she has that she's done that need need opposing. So I cover Brexit, lies. Oh yes, that's why we didn't cover your your personal lies in the election campaign. I have an entire video dedicated to that, which if I figure out how to YouTube properly, will pop up somewhere at some point. You can. Go watch that as well. We've covered your opposition. Um, you've voted 10 times against laws to promote equality and human rights. God knows why you've done that, but you have 10 times. 
Um, you have 16 times voted against uh, the right to remain, which was a crucial promise of the Brexit. Uh, the pro-Brexit campaign in the run-up to the election, that people who were already here would be given a right to stay here. Uh, it was in fact promised in the election, I believe, go, um, in 2016 after the referendum, saying they would have the right to remain here. Um, I don't know whether it was in the latest one, there was so much other nonsense going on there, I did not think to check. Um, let's go, what else we got? We got 11 votes against uh, sorry, 11 votes in favour of decreasing housing benefits, or uh, five times you voted against raising welfare in line with current prices. So the price of everything goes up, but the welfare stays the same, basically. Five times you have voted in favour of that. Uh, the three votes you've made against proportional representation, so you voted against a fairer system of electing our government. Um, you have voted 45 times to reduce welfare. The country is in a state where a record number of people are using food banks as a direct result of policies like that one, and you voted 45 times to reduce welfare. That's, that's not acceptable. I... And to top it all off, there's the 14 times you voted against climate change measures. A um, little personal story to add into, into this one. It's uh, second or third hand. Uh, but one of my younger sister's friends, when she was uh, uh, 18 or thereabouts, basically coming up to her first general election at the time, she went to a, uh, I believe it was a Hustings, with uh, Pauline Latham and, and asked her what her views on climate change were, what policies she intended to try and promote, you know, to, to combat climate change in the area or in the country, all that sort of stuff. The entirety of her answer was she would try and get Africans to stop cooking on open fires. That was it. That was the entire argument. The person she was talking to assumed she was joking, and when she tried to follow up on this, was shot down. An 18-year-old voting for the first time, and she just dismissed her opinions entirely. I know she's just aiming for her own audience of the old people who were already going to vote conservative but climate change is a global issue there are plenty of things we can do in this constituency in this country to combat it and you're going to blame it on africans cooking on fires that is despicable anyway we're getting a little bit a little bit off topic this good everything else bad I'll tell you what i'll give you one more clap for the dominic cummings thing well done do better in future but well done for that this sword is cool.